If you were to talk directly to the to the kids at Columbine or the people in that community, what what would what would you say to them if they were here right now? I wouldn't say a single word to them. I would listen to what they have to say, and that's what no one did. I was uh, shot outside uh, Columbine in 1999. I got shot 6 to 13 times in the chest. I was in the hospital for 50 days. Of the more than 20 wounded in the high school attack last week, six are still in the hospital, and new harrowing details of their stories have just come to light. We have a report on that now from Cynthia Bowers. Although he was shot, Mark Taylor is one of the lucky ones. Lucky because police got to him quickly after he was shot outside an entrance to Columbine High School and dragged to safety. I thought I was going to die. Lucky because doctors say he will be okay. I was just standing with my friends and I heard a gunshot. And I fell, a pain in my leg and I fell. And I fell a couple more and I just dropped and then I saw him uh, with a grenade and he was coming towards me and then a police officer <coughs> came and he ran off. For three years we couldn't figure out what really had happened. We had researched a lot of this until a wonderful saint of God ran down my pathway, and that's Dr. Tracy. I owe a lot to her. She testified on behalf of me of my court case. Um, we filed a lawsuit against um, Sovi Pharmaceuticals, um, and Pfizer came on and defended them. But it took three years to find out that just one little pill, just one little thing of chemicals can cause you to go on a shooting. After Eric and Dylan were arrested for breaking into the van in January 1998 and placed on probation, Eric was sent to a psychiatrist. His doctor prescribed an antidepressant typically used to treat obsessive compulsive disorder. According to Eric's parents, he took the medication regularly. And this is Mark Taylor. Both of these boys were shot the day of the Columbine massacre, and Mark is barely standing after numerous operations. The kids at Columbine had to pay a penalty. We paid a penalty that day for this nation, the way we look at it. The 17 cent Kmart bullets still embedded in their bodies. As they showed me the various entry points for the bullets, I thought of one way we could reduce the number of guns and bullets laying around. I asked the boys if they'd like to go to Kmart to return the merchandise. Return the merchandise. In Bowling for Columbine, uh, we never really came up with the answer in terms of why this happened. I think we did a good job of exposing all the reasons that were given were a bunch of BS. That's why I believe there should be an investigation in terms of what pharmaceuticals, prescribed pharmaceuticals, these kids were on.
this perhaps occurred for no other reason other than because of these prescriptions. Imagine what that would do. Imagine how people would totally rethink things, grasping for every little straw they can to explain why something like Columbine happens, when in fact it may be nothing more than this. How else do you explain two otherwise decent kids, very smart, no history of violence to other kids in the school? Why them? Why did this happen? It's an extremely legitimate question to pose, and it demands uh, an investigation. You're watching 7 News, working for you. Welcome back. It's a controversial antidepressant that some say contributed to several incidents of school violence, including the tragedy of Columbine. The drug Luvox brought an unlikely pair of teens together in Denver today. And 7 News reporter Julie Hayden joins us now. And Julie, they're getting together to take on a multi-billion dollar prescription drug market. That's right. Columbine shooting victim Mark Taylor is suing the manufacturer of the antidepressant drug, but he's also joining forces with another teen, this one who was accused in an incident of school violence, to get such drugs off the shelves. Mark Taylor, shot at Columbine High School, was a victim. All of a sudden, there was this big bang and it hit me in the leg. In an incident in another school, Corey Badsgard was a suspect. We wanted, we wanted to meet each other because we both know what the problem really was. The problem, they claim, antidepressant medications like Luvox. Eric Harris had been taking the drug when he and Dylan Klebold opened fire on classmates at Columbine. Badsgard said he had just started taking a similar drug two years ago when he walked into his Washington State High School with a hunting rifle and held 23 classmates hostage. There's a lot of people out there that have this problem and have been dealing with it for quite a while and and we really need to get, get some of this stuff off of the market. The unlikely pair is joining forces in Denver this week, talking to a freelance documentary crew. Their mission, they say, to get drugs like Luvox off the shelves. There's a kid that went to school and it was going to cause a tragedy, and a kid who's been through a tragedy teaming up together to speak out on the same cause. You know, their lawyers came in and said, if you don't drop this lawsuit, we're going to counter sue you. And we just didn't have the money to get the, the, the case forward. Yeah, so, so they, they intimidated you like an insurance company would or anybody else. It was full-on intimidation. It was a threat. Uh, yeah, they... And your attorney wouldn't stand up to that? Actually, I, 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 I hired three different attorneys on this case. <laughs> yeah. I had one attorney who came in, and then he got afraid. He wanted wanted to drop the case, so I hired another attorney to come on for him. Right. And that attorney got afraid, so I had to hire another attorney That's amazing. to take Do the case. Do you think these guys are being bought off by the drug companies, or what? Well, pretty much what the drug companies just told them is, we're going to sue you for representing this kid, just for, for taking it, this case on. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty high-powered. You know, that's a pretty good threat. Yes, the drug companies Mark um, was suddenly called uh, the day before he was supposed to have a hearing and told he needed to be in court that day to talk about settlement. His mother was not allowed in the room even though she was a party to the lawsuit and Mark was taken in alone and for hours uh, we heard nothing and when he got out he called me and the first words out of his mouth were I settled now I don't have to go to jail I said Mark who on earth made you think you had to go to jail if you didn't settle
Every time he hears of another threat, like the one at the Life School Gold Campus in Mesa last week, he hears the beginning of a nightmare. Mark now travels the country with a message. He believes antidepressants triggered the attack by Dylan Klebold and Harris. A doctor travels with him. Because too many kids have died as a result of these antidepressants. She points out the police report in the Mesa case shows the student told police he was taking Prozac. We still don't know much about the shooter who lived in this home, uh, but there is something else to consider. What medications, if any, he was on. And I'm specifically talking about antidepressants. If you look at the studies on other shootings like this that have happened, medications like this were a common factor. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not saying that antidepressants can't be effective, but people seem to agree that there is a vulnerable time when someone starts these medications and when someone stops could lead to increased impulsivity, decreased judgment, and making someone out of touch. The Food and Drug Administration estimates that in 2002, doctors wrote a record number of antidepressant prescriptions for children under 18, about 11 million. Nearly 3 million of those prescriptions were for children 11 and under. Overall, the FDA estimates that sales of antidepressant drugs in the United States increased from 14 million prescriptions in 1992 to 157 million in 2002. I find more that doctors are actually encouraging and pushing, putting lots of pressure on parents to medicate their children. The government has been reviewing the safety of antidepressants since last summer. The FDA's counterpart in Britain first sounded the alarm last year when it banned all SSRIs except Prozac for patients under 18. Taylor says he hopes the U.S. will eventually do the same, but until then, he'll be working toward that goal. This is a mission that I can't stop. I want to stop it. I mean, I want to get on with my own life, but it's just too important. Four days before the eighth anniversary of the Columbine shootings, today I spoke with one survivor who says he can see many similarities between what happened that day in Colorado and today at Virginia Tech. I feel so bad for the families that they didn't even get a chance not one chance to say goodbye to their kids. The shootings at Virginia Tech bring back vivid memories for Mark Taylor, who will never forget that day eight years ago at Columbine High School when he was shot at least seven times. They see it on TV, but it's not the same as actually being there in the action, having bullets fly past your head, having one second you're in normal prison, next minute your life's over with. He almost died that day, lying on the ground for hours before he was rescued. All he wanted to do was tell his family he loved them. That's probably what these kids were going through when they got shot. They're probably saying, oh, I wish I could see my parents before I die. Taylor was in Des Moines with his mother, Donna, and Dr. Ann Tracy, who's been studying the link between antidepressants and school shootings. Dr. Tracy says most of the recent school shooters have been on some type of antidepressant, and she thinks it will be the same at Virginia Tech. There's been enough clues already The early morning hours when it happens the previous shooting and then returning to shoot more people is another clue. Taylor says he was blessed to survive. Now he wants to help educate the public on the dangers of antidepressants, which the two gunmen at Columbine were both taking. He's written a book and hopes his story will help others. I think God allowed me personally to go through something to make me stronger, a stronger believer, to have more faith in him. Um, and my message to the, the victims in that community um, is to forgive. Taylor was in Des Moines today for a book signing. His new book is titled, I Asked, God Answered, A Columbine Miracle. Douglas Kennedy joins us here on, on set, just back from uh, Virginia. I think one of the things that we're missing here is uh, I, I spoke with his, uh, two of his roommates, and they described this guy as completely emotionless. You would say hello to him. He was completely out of touch with himself and with other people. Th th that is a description that you only hear these days of people who are on antidepressants. I did, a, did a, uh, a, an expose four years ago where we're linking violence to antidepressants. Is it taking them or forgetting or neglecting to take them? It is when you switch the antidepressants, but it is caused, people who take antidepressants often become uh, uh, emotionless, completely disconnected with their inner emotional life. 
it, it is, I, I talked to a guy who was in a war who said, you cannot go and shoot 30, you know, 50 people like this guy did. Even in a war, you can't shoot that many people without your humanity coming in and saying, but this guy was out of touch with his humanity. Meanwhile, Mark Taylor has testified before the FDA, which recently issued warnings on the side effects of antidepressants. I'm going to speak on behalf of the thousands of innocent Americans that have died as a result of these drugs. I want to ask the FDA, are you really making noble choices? Or are you just allowing the drug companies to squeeze by you just because they have big pocketbooks? Speaker uh, 21, please come forward. My name is Mark Taylor, and I'm one of the victims, one of the many victims of the SSRI antidepressant era. I took six to 13 bullets in the heart area at, at Columbine High School when Eric Harris, who was in fact on Luvox, fired at me. They almost had to amputate my leg and my arm. My heart was missed by only one millimeter. I had three surgeries. Five years later, I am still recuperating. I had to go through all of this to realize that antidepressants are dangerous for those who take them and for all those who associate with those who take them. I hope that my testimony today shows you that you need to take action immediately before more innocent people like me and you do not get hurt or die horrible deaths as a result. As Americans, we should have the right to feel safe. And if you were doing your jobs, we would be safe. Why are, are we worrying about terrorists in other countries when pharmaceutical companies have proven to be the, our biggest terrorists by releasing these drugs on an unsuspecting public. How are we supposed to be, feel safe at school, at home, on the street, at church, or elsewhere if we cannot trust the FDA to do what we are paying you to do? Where were you when I got shot? You say that these antidepressants are effective? So why did they not help Eric Harris? According to Eric, they helped him feel suicidal. He reported to his psychiatrist, he was having psychotic reactions to the drug. They took him off it, he said he was doing great. They put him back on it, he was having suicidal thoughts again. These drugs help increase the rage in people and cause them to do things they would not do else anyways. So why do these so-called antidepressants not make him better? <clears throat> I will tell you why. It's because they don't work. We should consider antidepressants to be accomplices to the murder. Thank you. This is a shame and it ought to be stopped today, not next week. The FDA decided to put warning labels on drugs nationwide, saying that drugs may cause suicidal tendencies. That's a pretty big deal. There is other news tonight. The FDA is putting out a public advisory, in effect a warning, that adults taking antidepressants need to be aware of possible suicide risks. Our medical correspondent, Elizabeth Caledon, is here. And Elizabeth, what should we make of this? Well, John, I think what this says is that the FDA is taking these drugs very seriously. They've learned over the years that there is a link between suicidal behavior and antidepressants in children. And now they're saying, look, we better take a good, hard look at antidepressants in adults. There have been a couple of new studies out that have suggested this link exists. And for the next year or so, the FDA is going to look at the entire body of data on antidepressants to come up with an official position on this. This warning covers basically all the antidepressants out there, and that list can be found on the FDA's website. So there are millions of adult Americans who are taking antidepressants. What should they do? Well, the watchword here is basically vigilance. And it doesn't just cover patients. It covers doctors and family members of people taking these drugs. We, we drew up a little checklist of what the FDA is suggesting people do. The first thing is to closely monitor anyone who's taking these drugs to see if their depression worsens or if they show suicidal behavior. Second is to watch patients especially closely if they're just starting on these drugs or have recently changed doses. And the third and a very important thing is if the symptoms get worse, people should contact a doctor immediately. Eric Harris was on an SSRI. Autopsy reports show he had the antidepressant Luvox in his system at the time of the Columbine shooting. Harris had been taking the drug since early 1998. 
And just three months before the Columbine killings, his dose was doubled. Taylor thinks Luvox triggered Harris's attack on Columbine and is now on a crusade to ban the drug and others like it. SSRI antidepressants hit the headlines in March when the Food and Drug Administration issued a health advisory on 10 popular types. With more than 150 million prescriptions written in the U.S. alone yearly, the names are quite familiar. Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, and the list goes on. The FDA is now concerned about clinical trials where some patients taking the drugs demonstrated increased hostility and more suicidal thoughts. I think these drugs are far too deadly to remain on the market. Dr. Ann Tracy is the director of the International Coalition for Drug Awareness. She says the way SSRIs work makes them deadly. They regulate a chemical in the brain called serotonin, a neurotransmitter that plays a role in mood and behavior. In 2007, Mark and his mom came to visit me the same year that Solvay put Luvax back on the market. Not long before the Virginia Tech shooting, he started drinking so much Mountain Dew that we were all noticing. He would often choose that over eating, and I was very concerned about his blood sugar. I mentioned to his mom that you needed to watch him carefully because diabetes runs in his family. And we began to notice that he had some unjustified fears. And I did some searching and found that there were several psychiatrists that were reporting that young people were becoming psychotic on Mountain Dew and that it would not go away unless they were taken off the Mountain Dew. And we did notice that when Mark was at my home and away from any stores where he couldn't get out to get Mountain Dew, he was fine. He'd go out and get Mountain Dew, and he started being fearful of things again. So we did notice that connection, and then later that year, he was taken into a psych ward. The psychiatrist in charge did notice what was going on with the Mountain Dew. We've since learned that an ingredient that has just been removed from Gatorade by Coca-Cola, but not yet from Mountain Dew, called brominated vegetable oil, will produce signs of a transient paranoid schizophrenia where there's so many fears. So the transient means, of course, that it's only temporary and that it leaves with the introduction of that particular substance to the body. So even though they began to drug him in this institution, they did notice the connection to the Mountain Dew, and we were able to get him out. Unfortunately, he did not remember as many times as he's heard me lecture about how you never abruptly discontinue an antidepressant or the new atypical antipsychotics because of the horrible withdrawal. The FDA has warned that abrupt discontinuation or any abrupt change in dose can produce suicide, hostility, or psychosis. Did you say that they took you to the hospital and put these robots in? Yeah, it's a weapon. A weapon? In Colorado is when yeah. they did it? Oh, that's when they did it? I got shot. When you get shot, they automatically assume that you're a gang member. It doesn't matter if you're innocent or not. The government puts weapons inside of you to control you. So you've had it in for 10 years? I've had it for 10 years. It's just running me. It's like weapons. Work. Show me where. You it's think on, it's on my body. They kill me with weapons inside of me. Really? Yeah. Can you feel it in there? That's the tiny one? Does it make you feel heavier inside? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been over 10 years, hasn't it? Yeah. How come they, didn't you say they had a button to press? Huh? Is this the kind that if they press a button, it would... Now they took it. It's a button, yeah. And they can press, it has a yeah. linked up to a button? Yeah. 
So what anything, hospital? Anything, anything that came wrong, they start pushing yeah. the button. Spiders going around me. They're actually electronic. Made of metal. Shocking. Inside of me. And Did they tell this one about the one they put in you? No, they didn't. They don't tell you. It's a weapon. <laughs> Did they, did they tell you it was like to save your life or something? No, they didn't tell me that. These, a lot of men who were criminals. Really? Yeah, they just cut them up and add them and stuff. Then they have a remote control. That good. They did anything. They started doing it on a lot of people. Um, as they line up defense, they cut a person open and put weapons inside of them. Then if a person committed a crime, they would just push a button, the weapon inside of them would go off, and they would die. It was a line of defense, rather than a hundred million cops showing up to oh. surround a building. They just sold them to millions of Americans, mm -hmm. um, so they wouldn't have to have cops, have SWAT teams go into stores. They would just have a remote control of them. If they did anything wrong, they just push a button, the weapons would go off, and they took a trip to Arizona to visit relatives, and Mark's mother was afraid that he was having a seizure and rushed him over to a hospital. They immediately pulled up his records and noticed he had been in a psych ward, so of course they assumed that's what it really was instead and threw him into an institution. Mark was um, uh, involuntarily taken at a local area, Bannergate Hospital, when his mother took him in the very beginning of January 2010. Uh, the family had been uh, exposed to methane gas, and Mark was showing some symptoms that he might be suffering from a uh, seizure. So his mom took him to the emergency room, and they just kept him. And uh, they started medicating him and over-medicating him and telling her that they were helping him. And they engaged in a systematic process of separating uh, Mark's mother, that is Donna Taylor, from Mark. The problem here is everybody wants this guy to get more mental health. The mental health that people are providing is not working. Uh, I, I, you know, the, uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable to me that we say, oh, this guy needs to be more involved in the system. It is the system that failed this guy. This guy was involved in the system. This guy was seeing psychiatrists. This guy was getting the medication. And th this is what happened. This is a phenomenon that has happened since we started treating mentally ill people with this type of medication. And there are certain people who should not be on them. One minute to the press conference. Doug, Doug is exactly on the mark. The guy's locked up in a mental institution for two days by an order of a judge. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't even know why he's there. Suddenly, the psychiatrist says to him, if we start giving you antidepressants, will you take them and behave and you can get out? Of course he's going to say Judge, yes. The happening. state forced him to take these People drugs. Miss Particularly with a guy like Cho who you know, is clearly volatile. If you, if you give somebody who is volatile these kinds of drugs, it numbs them out. It disconnects them from themselves. That's what they're designed to do. It takes their emotions away. So they, it, it turns them into psychopaths. Uh, even, the, even the drug makers themse themselves say 4% of people who take these drugs become maniacal, become let, maniacal. Let me ask and Mark, one of the things we wanted to talk about today was what happened in Colorado Springs a couple of years ago? You were in Colorado Springs at some kind of a facility, is that correct? Facility? In Colorado Springs, did you stay at a halfway house or some someplace? The lighthouse? Uh, yeah. What was the name of it? Is it hard 
for you to remember the lighthouse in Colorado Springs? Or would you want to not talk about it? Your body goes into a high. You're saying to yourself, this feels good, but your body is actually sick. That's what these pills, they make you sick and they cause you to go on horrible shootings. It's November 27th, 2012. I would like to be free. Wouldn't you like me to be free? Wasn't I promised to be free in this country? America land of the free? Wasn't liberty and freedom for me also? I was trying to protect others when, when they arrested me. Why won't you listen to me? Don't you wish I would have my freedom? Set me free from the system that's destroying me. I love my freedom. And I pray that you people who hear this message today you don't just go home and live your normal lives and go back to everything's normal. We need your help. We need your support. We need you to help us get this message out to others and to fight the drug company. Thank you. That's what our mission is, 